We're talking football today. Chad Cackert probably doesn't need any uh, introduction to CFL fans. Spent 2010 with the Jacksonville Jaguars and then 2011 to 2016 with the Toronto Argonauts. He was the MVP of the 2012 Grey Cup at Rogers Center, the 100th Grey Cup. How are things in Dallas, Chad? It's been warm lately, so that's the reason for the tank top. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, if you got it flaunted, I'm with you. Amid the (laughs) pandemic, though, by the way, because it is a very populous area, there's as many people in Texas as there are in Canada, what's life like in Dallas uh, amid the current situation? Uh, Things are are pretty closed down. Um, You know, I go out to get my coffee. I have my certain friend I go to uh, keep my training up with. But outside of that, Everyone seems to pretty much stay to themselves and, and stay inside. How about up there? Uh, well, not much has changed for us. It's Canada, as you know. Now, you played in Toronto, the most populous uh, city in the country, so you know what that's like. But, yeah, everything's locked down. It seems to be, Chad, the same almost everywhere we go. We've been going all over the continent checking in with guys, and they're like yourself, work, you know, getting their yeah. workouts in at home and being safe and doing what they're told and hoping for an end of this. Now, because Dallas is such a football hotbed, and I've been there a ton, does it mean much to your friends and folks down there that you are the, the MVP and champion of the 2012 Grey Cup? You know, it, it seems kind of like a, a life that's behind me. Um, but having that game played recently was was an interesting time to kind of reconnect with a lot of the fans. A lot of people reached out, uh, mostly on Instagram. Um, but it was kind of a, a nice reminder of what it was like up there. Man, what a great weekend that was. What a season that one was. But I even actually hopped on a Zoom call with uh, one of the front office guys and Sure enough, Jim Barker was on that call. So I got to catch up with a lot of folks uh, just without expecting to. Well, Jim wouldn't miss much, of course. And listen, we got lots of time here today. 2012 Grey Cup. I was there. It was amazing. Justin Bieber sang. Did you know that? Like the CFL for the 100th Grey Cup really put on a show. So tell me from an Argo player's perspective what it was like for you. Well, um, you know, we were coming off that 2011 season, just hoping to win more than six games in 2012. And with all the changes with them bringing in Scott and Ricky, um, it kind of shot some hope into us. And there was this far-fetched dream of like, hey, the 100th Grey Cup is in our hometown this year. We should probably play hard. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, uh, and things started to click for us. And... Um, just the way the season shook out was incredible. And by the time we um, handed it to Edmonton after the, the first playoff game, I think we realized that it wasn't just a possibility, that it was um, becoming a probability. Yeah, it was, so, it was so amazing in the game itself. I just have to interrupt this chat. Terry Vaughn is watching. And our question this morning, chat, our poll question is, when did you become a CFL fan? Terry Vaughn, the great TV says in 1995 when I became a player. He's a Hall of Famer uh, with the Edmonton Eskimos. So, Terry, thanks for answering that question. And I'll I'll go back to you, Chad. You're from California. You played at New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. When did the CFL come on your radar? Was it when you became a player, or was it before that? Were you aware of it? I think it, it came on my radar when I was at New Hampshire, and my teammate found out he was drafted. He didn't even know he was eligible. Or I'm not sure. His name was Ryan Hines. He played several years with uh, Hamilton and I believe a couple with Edmonton as well. Uh, but he was a teammate of mine and he got drafted and uh, so we were all fired up for him. Yeah, no kidding. So, uh, you know, back to that great cup for a second, because Ricky Foley came over to us right after that in 2013. Ricky's won three Grey cups. This guy's bound for the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, too. Uh, you spent a few years after that with the Toronto Argonauts. What ha- Argos, what happened with the club in the years after, from your perspective? Um, after 2012? Yeah, for you. Um, for me personally, uh, you know, signed a new contract, started uh, that next season. It was very different. I was used to kind of being the underdog and fighting for a spot, and so that, that was a change. But I think I might have played four or five games that year because I – tore my meniscus or my MCL and then, you know, came back and two plays later I had a concussion. And then, then I had that near career ending injury. So 2013 for me was a 
a trying year, that's for sure, and very different. But, you know, we get we got back to the – we won the East. We, we lost to Hamilton. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was a very different year. We definitely had the talent to take it all the way. It just things kind of shook out and um, not in our favor. Yeah, for sure. Chad, we got viewers writing in with questions that I'm going to pose them to you in a second. One, just on Terry Vaughn, for those that don't know, from Oceanside, California, he's watching today. Uh, guys, only a CFL All-Star in 96, 98, 99, 2000, 01, 02, 03, was the first player to reach 1,000 career receptions ever in the Canadian Football League. And he's watching right now former Stampeder, Eskimo, Alouette, and Tiger Cat. Uh, Randolph Zora is watching. He says, Chad, was the Brackenridge hit the hardest shot you ever took? I remember that. So so y'all are out of Saskatchewan then, yeah? Yep. Okay, yeah. So Brack, we were actually teammates in Jacksonville. So, you know, he, he was um, a friend in a way. And I, I honestly didn't find that hit to be um, foul in any way. I actually pleaded for him to not get fined for it um but yeah that was that was a tough hit and that's the that is the concussion I was talking about um but no there was that one that one was hard enough to knock me out so <laughs> I think the ones where you're still conscious hurt a little more well I gotta ask you <laughs> uh, yeah of course because you remember it um <laughs> I'm gonna talk pre-career and post-career pre-career how did you find your way to the CFL by the way is there one scout or one GM or personnel guy that you could credit for that oh is there one Mike Hagan from Toronto uh I think he was the director of player personnel at the time but actually I was on the Calgary's negotiation list and I got picked up by them out of uh out of Jacksonville and actually pulled my hamstring and you know Huff Nagel parted with me because I was just a rookie with no professional experience um so I spent two weeks as Jesse Lumsden's roommate in Calgary in 2010 actually before I made my way to Toronto but yeah I think it was Mike Hagan that was responsible mostly for getting me out there and giving me a shot Wow, that would have been a lot of laughs rooming with Lummer, I would think. As you recall, he was something of a demigod at the time, like Canada's version of The Bachelor. Oh, yeah. He was he was a star. What do you remember about rooming with Jesse? Um, I remember that we were both on the practice squad. Um, I think he was uh, mending an injury, but he was spending most of his time. That's when he just started training for the Olympic bobsleigh team. Um, so anytime I would try to get him to go out and golf, uh, he would go train with the Olympians. Can you put that well, comment we did have up? Some good time. Oh yeah, of course. Anything. Can you put the comment up from Jack in Calgary, by the way, Clark, if you don't mind, when, when you can find it, that's fine. Um, one of our viewers, Tyler wants to know, how does Chad take his coffee? We should get him some Caliber Coffee Roasters. That's one of our sponsors. What are you taking your coffee, Chad? Just drink it black. I live across the street from an Australian coffee shop, and it's honestly the best I've had. I was actually just in Australia for about two weeks, so great coffee everywhere. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, here's the comment uh, from Jack in Calgary. Rod, having former players on is great for the fans, but it's even better for the players. They don't want the interview to stop. <laughs> they love talking about the game. Uh, well, it's, we all love it. And I guess, Chad, that's where I will wrap it up is what's up in your life now? Clearly, you're still fit. Uh, are you working in the fitness industry or what, uh, what's keeping you busy these days? Yeah, pretty much a full-time um, coach and also – experimenting with a little bit of competitive fitness which is why i was in australia i was out there for uh, the australian crossfit championship which is a completely different world than um you know team sports but definitely keeps me challenged and it's been a great way for me to finally give back and um share what i've learned and continue to learn with um, people who are just trying to improve their lives well by the way we've had a lot of nfl cfl nhl major junior hockey players on the air over the last six weeks amid the pandemic, and they're all doing their workouts different ways. Some of them are doing them virtually with a trainer. Uh, others are just figuring it out on their own. What would you suggest to just Joe Sixpack that's trying to lose the uh, the extra pounds here during the break? Is it, Could they follow you? Do you have a virtual program they could use, or what would you suggest? 
Um, we have uh, we do have a virtual program. If anyone's legitimately interested in doing some online training, pretty much what we've been doing is we took all of our members at the gym and we've uh, personalized their program based on the equipment they have and their specific goals. So it's pretty streamlined. Um, but if I were just to give uh, my two cents on what to do, I, mean, I would say first to just uh, establish a, a routine, especially because you're stuck at home and it can just kind of be sit down, watch TV and eat. But give yourself like some tasks to do throughout the day. Maybe, you know, after each meal, you spend an hour doing something, whether it's an old hobby or reading or cleaning. Um, but but set aside some specific time for exercise and there's plenty of free resources on that. But if, if anyone did want some more specified stuff, uh, you can send them my way. Very easy to find Chad uh, on Instagram. That's how we found him. So I appreciate that. And I guess while I have you, because I don't know when's the next time I'll talk to you, Jay and Dan of TSN, they had just a fascination with you, the way they said your name, Chad Cackert. They still do. They were talking about it last week. Did you know those guys at all as you were in Argo living in, in Toronto? Or was that just their fascination with you? What, was, what were their names? Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole. I don't know if I ever had the pleasure of meeting them. Perfect. That's great for them. Well, <laughs> and, I, and I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. Totally fine. But you know what I'm talking about, Darren. Oh, yeah. He still doesn't chat cat here yeah. all the time. Chad, thanks for this, my friend. Uh, stay safe, and hopefully we can do it again. Yeah, y'all do the same. Thanks so much for having me. The MVP of the 2012 Grey Cup, Chad Cackert, joining us from Dallas, Texas. Cut the clip, boys. Chad Cacker. <laughs> That's got to go on Jay and Dan tonight, doesn't it? I would think so. <laughs> Sorry, what were their names? And I, <laughs> who were they? What were their names? <laughs> like, Sorry, who? So you understand this is live, <laughs> right, folks? I think I might have said Don O'Toole. Maybe it's on. Oh, Jay and Dan. I thought you meant Jay and Don. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. Never came. Oh. Man, he's a star. What a classic. Oh, yeah. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.